Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the organizers uh, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to, to speak uh, uh, here in the conference in honor of, of uh, Luke Luzi. Uh, the first time I met uh, Luke was in uh, 2017. We happened to be visiting uh, Chicago at the same time. He was there for a longer period. I was there just for a day or so for a seminar, and I remember we well, we happened to uh, all go for lunch together, and we had a very pleasant uh, conversation, and uh, many, many more uh, of those since uh, since I arrived, uh, uh, since I moved from the U.S. here uh, here to France. And Luke was uh, especially helpful uh, when when I just arrived, and uh, with uh, making sure that my French is progressing well, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and that my understanding of French culture is uh, is up to date, and also many <laughs> many uh, many interesting mathematical conversations and uh, and uh, pleasant moments uh, 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 over a meal or so. So thank thank you very much for for all that to, to look. I, I found him extremely generous and and, and kind, and it's an honor to to speak. Uh, to speak here uh, in, in this conference. Uh, the subject I'd like to discuss is the Groton Dixier conjecture, uh, which concerns uh, torsors and their reductive groups. So let me just begin by recalling what the conjecture says. The correct conjecture originated uh, in uh, around at the end of uh, 1950s. Uh, First, there was an article of, of Serre, uh, which uh, posed a special case. The group perhaps ca came from, from the base field, and, uh, and uh, then uh, Grotendieck and Le Groupe de Brouwer posed a slightly more general version. Later, uh, Colette Helen and Ojan Guren uh, popularized uh, the, the general form of the conjecture, which is what I'm going to formulate, still attributing this general form to Grotendieck and Serre. Uh, the first origins are perhaps in 58 or so. Uh, it says, the conjecture predicts, that if we have a regular local ring, a regular local ring R, and uh, a reductive R group scheme, well, uh, the conjecture is already interesting when G is split. So for instance, uh, uh, I don't know, P PGLN, uh, some, some, some uh, uh, SON or so on, but uh, a general, in general, a reductive group over, over, over a scheme or uh, over a ring, a regular local ring, like so, smooth affine uh, group scheme over, over that base whose, uh, whose fibers are connected uh, uh, reductive groups in the, in, the, in the usual sense over a field, in that their unipotent radical is, is trivial. So the conjecture predicts that no non-trivial no non G torsor, uh, trivializes over the fraction field of R. Or in cohomological terms, well, really this uh, is just a restatement, but if you, if you want, uh, the map of pointed sets From the from the collection of all of, of, of all uh, torsors under 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 G over over R uh, to the corresponding set of torsors over the fraction field has trivial kernel and in fact a posteriori because one is also allowed to apply the original statement to to inner forms of G this map is then ends up being even injective if the conjecture holds for G and all of its uh, well twists by torsors of uh, of G. So, so, so that's that's a question that I'll occupy myself with uh, during dur during this talk. And let me just uh, begin with uh, with with discussing uh, the cases. Well, the main cases in which the conjecture had been uh, ha had had been established. So we get uh, we get an idea of of the history of the question. So, uh, first of all, well, the simplest. Uh, the simplest reductive groups are commutative ones. Uh, the, uh, 
in other words, uh, the tori. And in the case when g is, g is a torus, uh, the conjecture was established by Colonel uh, Telen uh, and Sansuk in, uh, in 87. They used uh, so-called flask resolutions of, of tori to, to, to analyze to analyze dorsors under under an arbitrary torus. Uh, anyway, this case is not entirely evident, but somehow with the use of uh, of all these of these resolutions uh, in terms of uh, induced uh, tori and 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 so-called flask tori, one one can understand one can understand the question. Uh, the set. Well, okay, so that's that's the case when, when G is as simple as possible. Uh, the case when R is as simple as possible, well, beyond the trivial case when R is a field, uh, is when R is of, of dimension one, namely when R is a discrete relation ring, a regular local ring of dimension one. So this uh, was settled by Nisnevich uh, in 84 in his uh, Harvard P P PhD thesis. Uh, with some help from Bruja Titz. In fact, it uses, uh, in with some help from, from Titz, uh, who I believe was aware perhaps of the case when R is a complete discrete relation ring. And uh, so the, the argument proceeds by reducing to the case when R is complete. This step uses so-called harder, harder approximation, uh, which Nisnevich kind of ex ex extended and adapted to this to the setting. And the case when, when, when R is complete, one uses some Bruja Titz theory to um, I mean, to, to, to analyze torsors it, 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 in that case. Uh, all right. Uh, now, the, the case when R is of, of dimension at, at, at most one implies another, another case when R is are rather simple, well, relatively simple, namely when R is Henselian local. So this case uh, follows from, 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 from a case when R is a DVR. For instance, of course, if, if R is complete, regular local ring, it's, uh, it's in particular Henselian. So the com complete case is known basically because uh, when, when R is Henselian, then a torsor under a smooth, uh, smooth, uh, smooth group is, uh, is again going to be smooth. And, and so it will be trivial as soon as it, as soon, as soon as it is trivial over, over the residue field because uh, by Hansel's lemma, uh, a, a point of that torso over there is the field will always lift to, to an R point, uh, granted that uh, granted the thing is smooth. And so, uh, okay, so we only need to trivialize the torso over the residue field. And then we can sort of cut R up into, into a chain of, 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 of DVRs. I mean, into we, we can choose a chain of primes of, of maximal length such that uh, the quotients are, are regular and the successive quotients will be, will be DVRs. So somehow by this, <coughs> by, this uh, by choosing such chain and a little argument, we reduce the case when R is a, a DVR and uh, uh, then apply Nisnevich's, Nisnevich's argument. Anyway, so somehow the upshot of this, of this case three, although it's not particularly deep given, given, given the case two, is that the conjecture is simple when R is, uh, well, when, when R is complete or, or Henselian. And so in particular, to attack the conjecture in general, we cannot reasonably hope for a strategy where we somehow reduce the Henselization or completion. And then, because, I mean, that case already, that, that reduction must be the main, must be the main, the main difficulty is something else that one has uh, to come up with. Uh, all right, now uh, from, from more recent, uh, more recently, uh, the conjecture ha has been established uh, in the case when R contains a field. In fact, uh, this uh, was the subject of many works, which I'm not, uh, I will not be exhaustive of in, in mentioning there really was extensive literature in this, uh, in this case with, with many contributions. But uh, the final decisive uh, uh, decisive article that uh, settled this case completely is equal characteristic case, whereby Fedorov and Panin first they were assuming that R contains an infinite field that made some geometric arguments, notably uh, ones that use Bertini lemma, uh, slightly simpler. Then pa Panin extended the argument uh, 
to the case when R contains a finite field, so arbitrary equal characteristic regular local ring. Later, Fedorov simplified that proof yet again by uh, avoiding somehow initial reduction to the uh, case when she is uh, a simple, uh, a semi-simple, uh, simply connected, and uh, just taking up a general G uh, right away without that initial reduction. Now, so these are the main known, known cases. There, there, are, there are a few others. Uh, for example, when she is, uh, when she is of, of special kind, uh, I'll just say sporadic cases. Uh, OK. Uh, many authors, so again, I will not try uh, to be to, to be exhaustive, for example, if G is PGLN, so these sporadic cases concern the cases when either R or G are, are specific, either when R is of, of low dimension or G is of, or perhaps both are G is of uh, some special form. For, just for a simple example, if G is PGLN, then the conjecture is known because the torsos under PGLN, uh, they inject into, into the Brouwer group of R. And the Brouwer group, uh, by a result of, of Grotendieck of a regular base, the Brouwer group injects into, into a Brouwer group of the, of the fraction field. And so the case when G is PGLN is known is due to Grotendieck. In fact, it was one of the motivations for posing this conjecture in, in, in general, or hoping that perhaps the statement could, could, could be true in general. And so, uh, but in, in general, the, beyond the equal characteristic cases, somehow, not, not, not so much has been known about this, uh, about this con conjecture, especially when R is, uh, when R is ramified, uh, mixed characteristic, regular, regular local ring. When, when G is not specific, it's not specific well, so uh, then one perhaps first needs to negotiate what classes of G one is sort <laughs> of <laughs> talking about. Uh, yeah. Well, for example, well, G is just in a group scheme over over R. For, for example, I can uh, give mm -hmm. some. Uh, so, if G is an abelian scheme, is some kind of an orthogonal case to what we're discussing here. The statement is still true. The, the map on H one is injective because one can look at the dual abelian scheme, basically it amounts to the fact that line bundles uh, ex extend, but one uses uh, the crucial way the dual abelian scheme and then extending torsos and properness, properness of G. But uh, if G is finite, just finite flat, the statement is also true. If uh, more generally, if a finite scheme over, over a normal base has a section over a fraction field, and by taking the schematic closure, and that section is going to is going to is going to extend by, by normality and finiteness of the of the of the torso in in question. But uh, uh, oh, okay, I mean, I mean, I I don't know, but I think it's uh, not. I mean, I have some ideas, but not. not uh, Okay, maybe it was not uh, yeah, uh, yeah, premature. To, uh, anyway, so you can look at the constant case or twists of constant groups. Mm -hmm. And then I think it, it, it holds for uh, over a field. For smooth varieties, you have a twist of a constant. So this uses some analysis of pseudo-reductive and quasi-reductive. And, and using the previous arguments, but in a more a slight, uh, using the theory of uh, pseudo-reductive groups. And so, I mean, at least in the constant case, one can Give it, and then I think also in the twisted case, if you use the, so so the, this is uh, probably, well, essentially I know, in principle I think I know how to do such things by, for for uh, these constant see. groups or twists of constant groups. Okay, so you, you're saying G is a twist of a constant, uh, or a constant group, if I understand correctly. So th this means that uh, locally for the tal so on a smooth scheme over a field, uh -huh. uh, Locally, for the tal topology, it comes from uh, the the field of constants of the scheme. Ah, I, I, I understand. So it uh -huh. is a kind of possibly not a twist of a group. So there could be a germ. Anyway, uh -huh. whatever. Uh -huh. So this kind of, of situation. So this means that it somehow the behavior is very constant. Mm. 
on the and so uh, uh, so even there even just to get rid of the unipotent part requires some trick okay it's it's not so difficult but mm -hmm. I wanted to use uh, some work uh, so I think I have, I have enough inputs to do it but uh, it uses just a variance of the previous ideas but but also other things on about the two okay but yeah uh, okay th thanks so so there's some more general uh, statement that one, if I understand correctly, one could uh, one pretty much expects to be true if R is of equal characteristic or perhaps a localization of a smooth variety over a field, and G is a twist of a group that comes from a from a base from a base field. What? Uh, okay. Anyway, so the, uh, the 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 result that I'd like to talk about this is, is about this conjecture in the case when, uh, when uh, R is a mixed characteristic that, well, and uh, unramified. And so this, uh, uh, the mixed characteristic case is, 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 is the remaining one because of this result of uh, Fedorov uh, and Panin. And so uh, let me just uh, recall for the sake of, uh, of completeness what uh, do I mean by unramified. So a regular local ring R with maximal ideal M is called, well, it's said to be unramified if its residue characteristic is not in the square of its, of its maximal ideal, or more precisely, if either, uh, if either it is of equal characteristic, uh, if either R contains a field, so it's either a Q-algebra or an FP-algebra uh, for a prime P, or uh, R is uh, of mixed characteristic. R is of mixed characteristic, so a fraction field is characteristic zero and the residue field is of characteristic P. And this P, this, this prime number P, is not in the square of the maximal ideal of, uh, uh, of R. So that, that the kinds of rings we're talking about uh, just very, uh, I mean, it's so a very basic example, uh, affine space over, over Z localized at, uh, uh, at, the, at the origin in characteristic P, or uh, more generally, uh, any, any local ring of a smooth, uh, of a smooth Z, uh, of a smooth Z scheme, or, or, or in fact, anything in equal characteristic as also. All right, this is just, just an example of a smooth, uh, well, LC mixed characteristic zero P, so Z localized the P scheme. Uh, okay, so uh, the result that I'd like to discuss uh, in, this, uh, in, in, in this talk is uh, the, the conjecture of uh, Groton, Dick, and Sayer Uh, holds in the case uh, when uh, R is unramified and and G, the group G, is quasi-split. So it has it has a Borel subgroup. Uh, okay, for example, G could be split. That case is already uh, is, is, is already new in this result and is simpler. So that one can one can think of think of that case, for instance, I don't know some favorite uh, exceptional group uh, E sixty seven or something. But uh, okay, anyway, so that's that's uh, that's the that statement. And a little bonus uh, for such R, for such regular local R, namely the unramified ones, uh, could could be of equal characteristic or or possibly a mixed characteristic. A reductive a reductive R group scheme H. Uh, is split if and only if its base change to the fraction field of R is split. Yeah, so uh, in fact, uh, in general, the grotendieck ser conjecture implies that uh, two, two reductive group schemes over, over R that become isomorphic over the fraction field are isomorphic to begin with. 
So the Grondig set conjecture implies in particular that if a reductive R group scheme H is, is split, isomorphic to a split reductive group scheme, uh, over the fraction field, then it already has to be isomorphic to that over, over, the, over, over R itself. And this implication of Grondig set conjecture to this statement about uh, reductive groups themselves, uh, it requires the statement uh, of, of the conjecture not only for G, but for also for inner forms and perhaps for also for adjoint group and inner forms of those. And so it's not, uh, this quasi-splitness assumption is a little, uh, I mean, uh, anyway, we, we still get this conclusion about, about split groups, but we don't quite get that if you have two reductive groups over R, which are isomorphic or fraction field, then... Uh, then and so the, it does the second statement require more than the quasi-split case of the golden x conjecture? Uh, the way I formulated here, no, it, it, it does not require more b because I restrict it to split, to split groups, and that's... I mean, the, the point is that uh, if I restrict this uh, H, H is split if and only if the fraction field is split, then uh, it requires, it follows from quantum error conjecture and a little additional argument. Well, I think that works. So you don't assume that H is quasi, okay, H is general. Yes. A, and uh, is it true also that it is quasi split if and only if H fuck R is quasi split? Aha, uh -huh, yes. So that I cannot quite show. <laughs> uh, that's where, uh, Yes, one would perhaps wants to sh show that H is quasi-split if and only if over a fraction field is quasi-split. I cannot quite do that because if I try to do the same argument and I start needing the grondig serre conjecture for groups that need not necessarily be quasi-split. And uh, uh, an equal characteristic is true because, well, then the grondig serre is, is known. In fact, uh, yeah, so uh, there's uh, another conjecture of uh, call it Ellen and Panin, which says that if reductive group scheme uh, G over a regular local ring has a parabolic of a fixed type over a fraction field, and that parabolic is already, I mean, not that particular parabolic, but, but then it also has a parabolic of the same type over the regular local ring itself. The quasi splitness is just a case of, uh, of, of, of Borel's. Anyway, that conjecture is kind of a bit of another story. Uh, it's not a special case of, uh, of Grolandic sex. No. Another, it's another type of conjecture. Yeah, it's uh, spiritually related, but uh, not, uh, not so. Uh, okay, so uh, for, for, for this result, uh, in the rest of the talk, I'll focus on, on this first part, and, uh, just uh, Grolandic sex rather than about these forms of, of reductive groups. And uh, so the proof, uh, first of all, uh, the proof uh, uses known cases uh, one and two, but not uh, uh, three and five. In, in other words, uh, we, we use the case when G is a torus, or when G is, or when R is a DVR. But we're not using, for instance, the work of Fedorov and Panin when R contains a field. We recover that. Uh, I mean, we do prove that, although the proof is somewhat, I mean, it is related to, to, to their approach as well. So uh, we, we prove that case along the way. Uh, and in fact, well, I stated this in this form for, for simplicity, but in fact, uh, same statement, same statement holds when R is uh, merely semi-local. And uh, still unramified, in in the sense as local rings are unramified. Yeah. So uh, in fact, one could generalize the grondig serre conjecture to require that uh, the regular ring R be semi-local rather than local, uh, in some sense a na more natural starting point. And uh, uh, this this result, uh, if one assumes G to be quasi-split, is still okay in that uh, in that case. So I suppose uh, by Popescu, R is a limit of uh, smooth things over. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay, uh, we'll get there, yes. over ZP, and so probably you use it. Yes. But uh, is it then the case that the proof works for smooth things over uh, DVR, or, or you need that? Uh, right, uh, yes, there is, I have such a version as well. It, that it still works. Um, so, in fact, I could assume that R is, 
R is uh, geometrically regular over a DVR, is still, the statement is still okay. I'm um, just restricted to this absolute case somehow without for, in order not to introduce some, I mean, yeah, that case is still okay. Uh, all right, uh, so, well, let me perhaps just give a, a quick corollary just to illustrate somehow the arithmetic f flavor in some sense of, of, of the result is just for, uh, if one applies this to, uh, to orthogonal groups, uh, one gets that if two is invertible uh, in, in R, uh, so that we can comfortably talk about quadratic forms, uh, then uh, non-isomorphic Uh, non-degenerate quadratic forms over R uh, do not become isomorphic over a fraction field over yeah unramified local R. Do not become isomorphic over uh, the fraction field of R. It's a kind of kind of statements that one uh, that one gets by specializing to, uh, to to particular types of types of groups in in this uh, in this statement. Uh, okay, so uh, I'd, I'd like to then uh, proceed to to discussing the steps the steps of the proof. Of, of, of the main result because these steps themselves involve uh, somehow self-contained statements that could, could be us useful else, elsewhere be beyond the proof of this, of this particular result. So uh, let me then fix, fix the situation of what we have and what, or what we want. So we have an unramified regular local, unramified regular uh, local ring R and the quasi-split reductive R group, yeah, so as, as in the statement of the theorem, quasi-split reductive uh, R group G. So it being quasi-split, it has a Borel subgroup uh, defined, uh, yeah, defined over R, Borel R subgroup B inside uh, inside inside of G and we have a torsor under G which happens to be generically trivial generically trivial uh, G torsor e yeah and uh, we want uh, we want of course to show that e is trivial in other words that uh, it has an R point yeah, so uh, that this uh, E is trivial. Okay, and uh, well, I'd like to begin just uh, by telling you right away how the Borel is, is used. Uh, so, so this is captured by, by, by the following claim, which, which I'll sketch a, a proof of, which is not, not too long actually. So, uh, okay, so, uh, the fact that we have a Borel will give us that there is a closed subscheme of spec of R, closed subscheme Y of co-dimension at least two. So the complement contains all the height one uh, points, uh, such that uh, the restriction of E to the complement of, of Y, such that away from this closed Y, uh, this torsor reduces to a torsor under the unipotent radical of, 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 of the Borel. Well, this, okay, so this, this is not uh, difficult at all. Let me, let me sketch, let me sketch uh, the proof. Uh, of course, we will use the value criterion uh, of properness.
uh, we'll apply it to, to this E modulo B, B being a Borel, G mod B is proper, and uh, any torsor E, E mod B inherits that properness, so E mod B is a proper R scheme. Uh, well, it's a, yeah, a priori an algebraic space, but in fact it's even a scheme because uh, scheme of Borel's in some, in some, in some inner form of, of, uh, of G, namely the twist of, uh, of G by this torsor E. So uh, there exists, by this relative criterion, there exists such, such Y, such that E restricted to the complement of Y reduces uh, to, to B torsor. Right, because E mod B, uh, well E is generically trivial, so E mod B has a point over a refraction field, and as being trivial, that point extends to cover all the height one points of, of spec of R, so there is such such y, such that e mod b has a point over spec r minus y, but a point over, over, over there is the same thing as a reduction of a structure group of e to, from g to, to b. So e restricted to that complement reduces to, to a b torsor. I'll call that b torsor e upper b. And uh, if we consider the torus, which is a quotient of the Borel by its unipotent radical, uh, then there is a purity for uh, for torsors under tori. Uh, this is due to Coletelen uh, and 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 Sansuk, which says that uh, for for torsors under tori. Uh, and over a regular basis, removing a closed subscheme of codimension at least two does not matter. That does not affect the H1. Uh, one, can, one can always uh, remove a closed of codimension at least two. And so uh, that, that purity uh, Im implies that the quotient of, uh, of this U upper B by the unipotent radical extends to a generically trivial uh, T torsor over R. So, so this quotient is, is, a, is a torsor under, under T over spec R minus, minus Y. And because, uh, because this, this complement covers all the height one points, Purity for H1 of, of Tori tells us that, that this torsor under torus extends to a torsor defined over all of, all of R and to a generically trivial torsor uh, for that matter. And so uh, by applying, uh, uh, applying Grotendieck-Serre for Tori, we get that uh, that torsor, that T torsor to which this uniquely extends is trivial because it's generically trivial. In other words, this, uh, this quotient has a point, has a section, in particular over a complement, over a complement of y, and uh, and this this section then uh, gives us uh, gives us uh, well this is actually what what we want because sections of this quotient are reductions of EB to, to torsors on the unipotent radical. So this, uh, okay, in, uh, in short, we, we just, we just showed, showed this claim that our generically trivial torsor uh, E, thanks to, thanks to quasi-splitness of, of, of G, uh, over a, over a complement of a closed subscheme of convention at least two, reduces to a torsor of, or, under the unipotent radical uh, of a Borel. So, uh, okay, let's perhaps just uh, a warm up. Now, uh, let, let's, uh, let's proceed with, uh, with kind of overviewing the, the proof of, of, of the main result. So the main case, uh, I mean, as, as I said, uh, it doesn't matter what R is of equal characteristic or it's of mixed characteristic, but, uh, but because equal characteristic case was already known, I will, uh, assume 
for the rest that are so mixed uh, characteristic 0p, that's somehow the main case uh, of, of interest, a more difficult case. And so uh, the, main, the main difficulty is, uh, well, somehow slightly philosophically speaking, is that we cannot, we cannot enlarge R. We can somehow can only shrink it. Well, what, what, do, what do I mean by that? So for instance, we cannot uh, replace R just by its completion or so, because that would, uh, over completion, the whole conjecture is known. And any attempt to somehow make R larger runs to the problem is that over its larger ring, the torsor that you're studying may uh, become trivial. So when somehow tries to go backwards and make R uh, simpler by, by, well, by, by shrinking it. And so uh, concretely, let me give an example of, of what I mean by this. So uh, Popescu's result, Popescu approximation is one such uh, structural result for, 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 for regular rings. And that's where we use the assumption that R is unramified. So it implies that our unramified regular local ring is a filter direct limit of localizations well, of, uh, yeah, of smooth Z localized at P algebras. Popescu uh, proved that any, any unramified regular local ring is somehow, I mean, it's of geometric origin in the sense that it can be obtained as a filter direct limit of, of smooth algebras, either over a field in equal characteristic or over Z localized at P in, in mixed characteristic. And this result somehow allows us uh, to, to start using algebraic geometries uh, for, 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 this, for, this, for this problem. So we, we, use, uh, we use Popescu approximation and the limit argument uh, to reduce to the case when R is just the localization of a smooth ZP algebra. So without loss of generality, R is a local ring Well, a local ring of uh, of a smooth affine Z localized at P scheme, which I'll call X. So, incidentally, in this uh, small remark about the semi-local case, yeah. in the semi-local case, can you allow residual characteristics to be different primes, and in each one, you will know that it is unramified or or do, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's like that. Uh, I can allow them to be of different, uh, and, and in each one of them is, is unramified. Uh, okay, so uh, R, is, R is a local ring of a smooth, uh, smooth uh, affine Z localized at P scheme. Uh, I'll assume that the relative dimension of uh, of x is d, and I'll assume that it's that it's positive, because the d equals zero case is just uh, basically the DVR case, uh, and that that is a case already known. So anyway, so these these positive uh, without loss of generality, and uh, our g e and uh, and this closed subscheme y that we constructed in the claim, they spread out by shrinking x we can assume that they spread out to a reductive group scheme script G, a torsor under it script E, and a closed subscheme Y uh, defined, uh, defined over, over all of X. Okay, so, so that's, that's the setup we have. We have some smooth affine Z localized at P scheme and then a reductive group scheme and a torsor defined, def, defined over it. Uh, e is generically trivial. In fact, o over the complement of Y, it reduces to a torsor and the unipotent radical. And so if that complement were affine, then that, uh, then that uh, over that complement, the torsor would be, would be trivial. Uh, and we, we want to show that E is, uh, e is trivial at, at the local ring that we're uh, talking about. So for, for this, uh, is we will outline multiple steps of, of 
how to kind of step-by-step uh, -step simplify this situation. So first of all, we will, uh, we will simplify the, the geometry with, with, with some version of, of, of Newton normalization. So the first step does not use anything about the groups. It's just, it just algebraic geometry. It's a version of Newton normalization or some sort of preparation lemma. Uh, which ensures that uh, x and y are of particularly pleasant form. So uh, what, what does this Noether normalization say? What is, well, I put it in quotes. It's not really Noether normalization as you see, but the statement is that uh, there are an affine open uh, u in, in, inside x uh, containing containing spec R. So there's a smaller, smaller, smaller affine open neighborhood of, of, of this local ring that we're really interested in, such that over this U we have a smooth map, smooth, smooth map of relative dimension one. And we'll call it, we'll call it map pi. Uh, so this U is a relative smooth curve over an S which has an open of, uh, of the affine space of, of, dimension, of dimension one lower. Uh, it's an open containing the origin. Yeah, this S is just some affine open. Uh, okay, and crucially, so, so locally uh, at the neighborhood of, of R, the, the X is fibered as a relative smooth curve over 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 a particular simple simple base, and moreover, our y, uh, our our script y closed subscheme uh, over a complement of which something good happens, is such that its intersection with this with this u is finite over s, not 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 merely quasi finite but actually literally finite. So neutral normalization would would say that. I mean, ideally, if, if there was not a normalization in mixed characteristic, it would say that, well, after shrinking at this, at this point x, uh, or so, sorry, so that it would say that x admits perhaps a finite map to, to the affine space. That's what neutral normalization over a field says. In mixed characteristic, that cannot be true. For instance, there are quasi-finite schemes that are not, not finite. Uh, and uh, this version says that at least after knocking dimension down by one, we can find a smooth, smooth, uh, smooth relative curve, such that the closed subscheme of codimension at least two that we're interested in is actually literally still finite. And this, uh, this, this, uh, so here are some ingredients. Sorry? It's a bit, bit like Artin. Uh. Yeah, right. In fact, uh, Artin's uh, good neighborhood uh, technique is used in proving, improving this. So uh, it's, it's some sort of, I mean, it is not really not a normalization in its classical sense. It's just intuitively a, a statement of, of, of that sort. So ingredients to this is, uh, well, Bertini theorem uh, applied, applied to a compactification. of x to a projective flat uh, scheme x bar over, over z localized at p. And in fact, we use uh, Gabber's version of Bertini theorem, which valid also for finite fields. Uh, well, it's also Poonen's version. And uh, in fact, Gabber's version is slightly more convenient for us because it allows us to control degrees of the hypersurfaces that, that, that occur. Basically, the idea is we take uh, this compactification and we cut it iteratively by sufficiently transversal hypersurfaces and the equations of these hypersurfaces will be the images of the d minus one standard coordinates of of a1 and so the fiber over zero will be the intersection of u with these with these hypersurfaces and so if we if we if we choose them well then that uh, zero fiber will be smoothed somehow by bertini and uh, and then this will also will also hold and will spread out Around around zero, this this is a kind of uh, thing that happens that happens here, and of course this is uh, as Luke uh, already remarked, this this is similar 
uh, to Artens method, so techniques uh, from Artens uh, construction of good neighborhoods from SGA4. So Artin constructed such low configurations into, into curves in equal characteristic over a field, perhaps a algebraic closed field. He used it to, to show that the tal cohomology uh, agrees with its analytic co counterpart. And this, uh, this result was, was used, uh, I mean, his technique was used for many other purposes too. And let me just mention that earlier versions of this, uh, of this type of preparation lemma, versions over a field, of this step one uh, are due to due to Quillen, who used also such kind of neutral normalizations with especially with respect to the aspect that one wants to control a closed subscheme to study algebra IK theory and later uh, refined by Gaber in the context of Gersten uh, conjecture. Okay, so so that's uh, step one. It was uh, Geometric step one. Let's pass to step two, which in fact is uh, is 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 straightforward. This is base change. So what what do I mean by that? So let me just uh, summarize what what we have so far. So we have our u going to s, and s is an open is an is an open in affine space of dimension uh, one lower. So Z, Z localized at P, and and U, well, uh, let me just write like that. Perhaps U going going to S, S is this open, and U is a relative curve. Is a relative smooth curve of, 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 over this S, and we have we have. Uh, let me perhaps use uh, color chalk. So so we have this Y. Uh, crucially, we have we have y here, which contains uh, well, uh, which probably contains a point we're interested in, which contains a local. I mean, intersects spec R, which is the localization of fiber above above zero in this in this in this in this vibration into curves. Okay, so what so what do we do? Well. Uh, spec R is a local ring of this total space of U. Well, we uh, take it one more time. That's another copy of spec R right here. And so it maps to S, we just take a fiber product. Uh, we get some C. So what is C? Uh, well, C is a relative, smooth relative curve over, over, over spec R. Uh, yeah, so we get C over R. Smooth affine R curve, basically because C had the uh, U had these properties over S. Uh, we get well, it comes equipped with an R point with a section uh, delta, which is which is an R point of of uh, of C. Just because, I mean, there was also a copy of spec R here, so surely we'll get we'll get a section from that. Just by construction, Z in C is a closed, so it's a closed subscheme which is finite over R. So R finite closed subscheme, which is just a base change of Y intersect or intersect with, with U that was finite over, over S and Z, so base change uh, of uh, of y intersect u is going to be finite over r. Uh, e, uh, well, we'll also have g over, over c, uh, which is uh, quasi-split. By base changing the group scheme, we get a quasi-split reductive, reductive group over c with Borel, with Borel, script B such that delta pullback of uh, this pair, Borel inside a reductive group scheme, is uh, 
our original Borel inside, inside G. Basically because our reductive group G need not be constant over S, when we base change the reductive group to C, we get a family of, I mean, we get a reductive group scheme over C with the Borel, uh, which need not come from, from spec R. And so, but its, uh, its pullback along delta is going to be the original uh, G that we, uh, that, we start, that we start from. And by base changing the torsor, we get uh, a torsor over this relative curve, a G torsor, script G torsor, uh, whose pullback along delta is, is E and uh, such that the restriction of E to the complement of this R finite closed subscheme C uh, reduces to a torsor under the unit potent radical of, 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 of the Borel. Okay, well, so from, if in effect, what we, what we managed to achieve here with this, with these first two steps is that we managed to manufacture a relative curve, a reductive group and a torso over that, uh, equipped with a section such that the original torso we're studying actually lifts to, to, to this relative curve. And so, uh, in later steps, we use somehow the, the, the flexibility of the setup to, to change C and to eventually reduce to the case when C is the affine line and uh, delta is the zero section and Z is some closed finite subscheme. And then you, well, okay, then use techniques about studying torsos under affine line. So, the upshot of this is that we have the flexibility. Of changing, of changing C, and the problem becomes a little more geometric. Uh, wh when did I start? Ah, mm, oh, oh, okay. Oh, good. good. Uh, all right. So uh, the the next step. Uh, the next step. Well, n now. The, the price we paid is that our G is no longer constant. We have some script G over the relative curve. We don't quite like that. So uh, we would like to equate this, uh, this reductive group script G and the constant group just G base change to C. And the idea for this, uh, I mean, it's not, okay, f first let me give this proposition, which in fact a general Proposition. So for 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 a uh, for a Hanselian pair A, the ring A, which is Hanselian with respect to ideal I, uh, such that the quotient A mod I is normal, or f or not here in geometric linear branch should also be okay. But okay, A mod I is normal. Uh, then uh, reductive reductive groups. Over uh, over over a up to isomorphism are the same as reduct as their base changes reductive groups over a mod i up to isomorphism. In other words, up to isomorphism, every reductive group over i mod a mod i lifts uniquely to a reductive group over over a. Granted that a mod i is normal and the pair is Hanselian. In the case when, when this is just a Henselian local ring, it's an SJ3, and one can uh, well one can also obtain this more general uh, more general ver version. Uh, so the idea is to Henselize. I mean, roughly speaking, the idea is to Henselize uh, Henselize delta along sorry Henselize C along delta to equate. To equate G and and this constant group, which is which is a base change. Uh, now this because over the hemisphericalization, because uh, script G and and the constant group agree over after pull back to the section, then they will agree over the hemisphericalization, and then after spreading out, we'll have some little curve where where they start to agreeing. The problem is that we cannot we cannot do that uh, because uh, we need this. Uh, 
this does not retain finiteness of, of z. We, have, we need this closed subscheme z uh, over the complement of which something good happens, and we really need uh, it to be finite over, over, over z rather than just quasi-finite. And if we do cancellation, we will only get quasi-finite. Keep control of the b which enters into the situation. Right, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. We also, there's a finer version of this proposition where, in fact, it's equal to a Borel. I mean, this one is quasi-split if and only that one is quasi-split. So yeah, that's a version of the b's, but I just. Uh, OK, so uh, in fact, one proves a finer proposition where the et al neighborhood is not only et al, but actually finite et al. So uh, the, the, the proposition is as follows. After shrinking, after shrinking uh, C, uh, meaning Sariski locally, so around, uh, around this union of, of delta and, and C, uh, there, exists, there exists a finite et al, not merely at all, but actually finite at all, C tilde over C. Uh, and, and a delta tilde, an R tilde, an R point of C tilde, uh, lifting, uh, lifting, uh, lifting delta, uh, such that uh, the base change of this B inside, inside G to C tilde is isomorphic to, uh, um, to, to just a constant family base change from, from R. Uh, like so, uh, compatibly, compatibly with delta tilde pullbacks. I mean, after, delta, after pulling back by delta tilde, everything is identified with a constant. And the identification here is compatible with that one. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we can find a finite et al. Uh, cover finite et al. neighborhood of this delta union z, where where the good thing happens, the b inside g becomes becomes constant, and so uh, in ingredients ingredients for this. One uses uh, one uses toric to toric geometry, uh, toric geometry to build uh, compactifications of torsors, to build compactifications of uh, torsors under tori, and. Uh, then one uses Bertini theorem. Roughly speaking, the idea is uh, that functors which parameterize uh, reductive groups equal to the Borel, uh, these are, I mean, relate to automorphism groups of, of, of reductive groups. And um, I mean, by some little devisage, one reduces, because our G is quasi split, one, one reduces uh, to considering torsors under tori. And so the same kind of pro proposition where one wants to equate torsors under, under tori. And to do that, one first compactifies the torsor uh, over the torsor begins, a constant torsor begins life over R. One compactifies it uh, using toric geometry. So in fact, the statement is that if one has a normal, normal base, normal Noetherian C ring, for example, a torus, uh, which is, uh, which is a uh, trivial torus which splits over finite et al cover, and a torsor under the torus, then we can find a projective compactification of the torsor such that uh, the torsor is fiber-wise dense in that, in that compactification. And to build such a compactification, one uses toric subdivision. So it's, uh... anyway, I will not perhaps go, and go, go into this and proceed directly to step, uh, uh, to step four, but, but let me just, uh, say the upshot. So the upshot of, of, of this step three without loss of generality, B inside this is uh, this this Borel is just constant. And and the group is also is, is constant. So uh, all right. And so the rest of the argument is to massage C into the affine line 
and then study the case of a affine line using uh, affine Grassmannians and uh, some geometric property of affine Grassmannians that I hope I will uh, get to anyway. So, uh, so step four is to reduce to the affine line. So the goal is to replace, uh, replace C by the affine line. This would simplify, okay, this would simplify the situation. So, uh, so here we build a diagram. Uh, we have our C and we will build a quasi-finite map. We build a quasi-finite map to, to A1 of R such that uh, we have some affine open, affine open of C containing containing delta and, and z containing delta, the section delta, and inside this affine open z, z lies completely inside it. The point is that this map is such that it maps z isomorphically onto a closed subscheme of, uh, so, so these are both closed, uh, maps it isomorphically onto a closed subscheme of the affine line, and moreover, this right-hand square is actually Cartesian. In other words, we, we realize Z as a pullback of a closed subscheme of, of, of the affine line. And this quasi-finite map is automatically flat because uh, C is, uh, well, C is even regular, and, but C is con macaulay and A1 is regular, so quasi-finite is, is automatically flat. So this kind of preparation lemma uh, uses uh, well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm out of time, so let me uh, ju just mention so that this, uh, uh, yeah, so use excision somehow uh, to reduce to C being A1. This, anyway, there's some subtleties in that excision, but uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. And uh, once we have, once we have the affine line, uh, we, we we conclude uh, by, by using affine Grassmannians. And here, uh, I mean, okay, the key 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 statement. Anyway, over the affine line, one needs to one needs to study extensions to to, to, to projective line, and the key. And these uh, these extensions somehow uh, given by gluing so the trivial torsor are, are parameterized by affine. Uh, I mean, are related to affine Grassmannian. And the key key geometric statement that enters is that the affine Grassmannian of any of any group G, one takes its derived subgroup and a simply connected cover by functoriality that maps to the original affine Grassmannian and its relative identity component. This map is bijective. Bijective on field valued points. Uh, well, one, one shows this and uh, I recall that if, uh, if the characteristic of, of the field does not, uh, does not divide the pi 1 of the cardinality of, the fun of, of pi 1 of, of the derived subgroup, then this map f uh, is even an isomorphism. But in that characteristic, there is there's nevertheless this refinement that, that the map F is at least bijective on field valued points, which kind of helps us a lot because it tells us that points of this are invariant under multiplication by L. I mean, points of this which lift to there are invariant under multiplication by L, the positive, positive uh, loop group L plus of G because the lattice connect. Anyway, okay, so I'm out of time and uh, this is somehow the main geometric uh, point that is used in the, to finish the argument. But Roughly, that's how the, the proof. Well, I remember, I think I looked well, once at your brief, and maybe it is this one, and you referred to the, your paper on qualification at some step. Right. Is it in this paper, in this proof? Yes, so in fact, Where is it exactly? uh, so in fact, in the original version of this, of, this, uh, of this result, I was only proving the result for split groups, yes. and I was using uh, X bar was uh, that compactification X bar was coin Macaulay and the geometry was kind of complicated. So I, I was using Macaulifications. 
And later, when trying to extend to quasi-split groups, I realized that actually by doing arguments slightly differently, one can just get rid of more qualifications and the geometric part becomes simpler. So anyway, short so answer is that, yeah, I don't, I don't need it. In the original version, I used more qualifications and I thought that this was, uh, I mean, it turns out they're not essential. One can bypass them. So I, I don't use more qualifications in, the, in this. In this okay, version. okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Alors, est-ce qu'il y a des, des questions dans si l'insistance Peut-être Luc uh, Luc, je sais pas si. Une question en deux above. So, R is the dimension at most one, but there's no uh, uh, unramifiedness assumption there. Yeah, right. Mm. And uh, in fact, the way that proof of this case two works is by first passing to completion and then using Brohat's theory. And nowhere there, somehow the proof there is a bit orthogonal to what we're doing here. It's kind of just gen general facts about v discrete relation rings, whereas what we're trying to do here is trying to use Popescu to reduce to some uh, regular rings of geometric origin and then try, you know, try to do some algebraic geometry with it. So it uh, it's also a main limitation of why one, I mean, why it seems difficult to, to go to ramified regular rings because uh, then Popescu is not available and we just don't know what to do. But uh, um, I mean, I don't know, perhaps perhaps the, the, the correct approach is to try to generalize this, this two to regular local, arbitrary regular local rings, but uh, it's also, I mean, far from straightforward. Anyway, this current attacks on the higher dimensional case pass through Popescu, anyway. Also, I think in the sporadic uh, cases, uh, there was this uh, result of boning, right? Uh, or valuation fee. Yeah, so uh, Ningo actually, he uh, proved a version of, of this conjecture uh, over valuation rings. So one has uh, a valuation ring, not necessarily not here, and by resolution of singularity, it's thought to be a filter direct limit of regular local rings. So the same conjecture should be true if one has a a torsor and the reductive group over valuation ring, then which is generically trivial and it must be trivial. And he proved that unconditionally. Uh, I mean, that's somehow close to the DVR case, except that the valuation ring is no longer noetherian. Okay. So, I'd like to thank the orator again. Thank you. Thank you.